Hello everybody, I thought I would provide you with an update on M04S11 which is the recording option. Some of you chose the performance option with my colleague Al Thomas, so if you did you need watch no further. Uh, but I thought it was about time I provided you with an update as of today, the 23rd of June, and to look at the assignments. So first of all, the current studio situation is that the studios remain closed and we don't have any information on when they will open. However, we do know that when they do open, which we expect them to open in September, there will be no return to normal. And that's the information that I've got. So rather than go into specific detail, um, it, I just like to say that, you know, things that we've taken for granted in the past such as you know unsupervised practice and you know nine till nine opening and weekend openings and all of these sorts of things that we've had in the past booking equipment booking microphones all of that stuff that we've taken for granted uh, may may look very different come september and um we, we might find ourselves in a situation where it's it's you know increasingly harder for, to come in and, and use the facilities as you know them as you remember them when you used them before the lockdown. So my suggestion is that I now look at offering you an assignment which you can uh, complete at home uh, without the use of the recording studios. So you can do this entirely at home using whatever software you like, don't have to use Logic, the, the option, my assignment now, will still meet the learning outcomes, although the experience for you, I understand, will be very different, i.e. you don't get to record in a recording studio. And I think that's probably the most prudent way to go about it, is to say, well, look, you know, you can do this at home, you can get the module, you can get the experience, you can get through the course, and that's one thing. And then, of course, we, we can have discussions about, uh, about offering students that have been affected uh, by this lockdown the opportunity to come in and use the facilities uh, even after they've graduated so that they still get access to equipment and studios as as was promised or promised but as was part of this module so you know as a goodwill gesture and I, I haven't spoken to colleagues about that but we think that that would be a perfectly reasonable thing to do so you get the assignment done you get that finished but then if you wanted to come back in maybe work with other students. That's not uncommon. This isn't something that we haven't, you know, never done before. It's quite often that students return and work with new students on productions. So that's something that we can continue to do and maybe something that we can develop in a sense that we might need uh, students or artists coming, coming into the facility who know the facility and, and know the situation. It might be beneficial to us to have that sort of knowledge coming in as you know as well as you guys as songwriters working with engineers and producers and doing all that sort of stuff so i think i think that's probably the, the best way to go about it so i've changed slightly changed the assignment briefs the learning outcomes are the same everything's the same but i've changed the assignment briefs and the idea is now that you can as i said do this at home so you can see on my screen now there's a document here which i'll post which says that the assignment is now due friday the 4th of september so uh, that's in line with um, your final major project submission. So uh, I don't know if Matthew's already given you the deadline, but it, it, it's probably going to be Friday the 4th of September. I know that some of you um, may carry on till to December and submit your final major project in December, which is something that I believe has been offered. Check with Matthew first, but I believe that's been offered. I've offered that to my... Um, my postgraduates the MSCs but I think it's I don't think there's anything but gained from waiting to submit this assignment in December I think it's I think it's better to submit it sooner I say that because I think it's better to get it in sooner and then if we need to look at that through the university's no detriment policy it gives us a three-month period to actually do that if you follow so I've seen the no detriment policy in action now during these subject boards and I've seen how it's being used and utilised based on that experience. I would suggest getting your work done in September and then that will buy us some time if we need to 
um, look at anything before we put the, the final major project in in December. So assignment one will now be a pre-production proposal. You might remember me saying some time back uh, that I'd changed it slightly to uh, from an e-journal to the Microsoft form. And some of you might have started to fill out that Microsoft form. And then I said, hang on a minute, wait, I need to think this through a bit more. But I'm going to keep that Microsoft form. And the assignment one is, is still a, a pre-production proposal. So the idea of this document, I should go to it here, is that it's a planning document. It's intended as a planning document for the pre-production stage. And that's simply everything before you actually go into the recording studio. So this really still has benefits to you if you then decide that you want to take this song into the studio and record it, book microphones, book studios. This will allow you to actually put together a planning document which you can then implement at a later date. So at the moment you're talking about a hypothetical situation that you might implicate later on. So what I've done is I've used this Microsoft form because I, I think they're quite straightforward to use and it saves uh, it, it basically when you submit it when you press submit it goes straight to my email so that's nice and neat but if we just go through each of these sections obviously your your name so I know who you are and and of course I've written this from the perspective of uh, of you uh, either you being the artist or either you're working with an artist I should imagine in this case now that you will be the artist because you'll be recording yourself at home but still nonetheless I think it's really interesting if you could provide me with some background information I know some of you have already got stuff on Spotify that uh, you, you you know you're already gigging you're published so you might want to provide some uh, background and any links that you might have to online material Spotify that sort of stuff just to give uh, me a context of of your work and your your work so far up until this point and then section three here general song information so begin with providing information on the song including title or a working title is fine structure arrangement key tempo time signature inspiration your role writer performer producer lyrics any other musicians that might be playing on it and just offer as much information as possible think of it like um you know the liner notes on an album where you get back in the day where you get all that information about where it was recorded when it was recorded who played what uh, what you know who was producing who was engineering all of that information would sort of go in there and then, of course, I'm really interested uh, in your production influences. So provide information on how you want the song to sound. And I think that's a really good um, you know, advice or, or something to consider when producing a song is how do you want it to sound? Who do you want to sound like? If anybody, if you could say that you wanted to sound like somebody, who would that be? Who are your influence, influences? And again, you can embed production playlists or YouTube examples. You could discuss producers, production stock styles, quotes, and so on. So all of your production influences in there. And then this bit here, recording notes, section one, instruments and equipment. So list the instruments that you've, you're gonna use and the, any equipment, anything at all. So obviously this was initially written with the studio in mind, but of course the instruments that you play and that you have in your home are, uh, would go in here in this section. And of course, if you then wanted to also say that if, if you had this instrument, you would include it, you can put that in there. So for example, if you wanted somebody to play cello, but and you knew somebody at the university could play cello, but they, you know, you can't get access to them, you, you, can, you can put it in here. That said, there's been a lot of collaborations online, so you still might want to maybe look at that in collaborating online with people. And then here, recording notes section six, recording notes section two, uh, microphones. So list the microphones, the placements, and of course you can use Connect to our microphone booking system to look at what microphones are available. And if you were in a situation where you could record, say, a live drum kit, you know, you want to list the, the elements of the kit, kicks, snare, hi-hats, and all that, and then just list by the side of it the microphone that you would use and give a short description as to why you would use that microphone. If you're just working at home, then of course you're going to be discussing the equipment that you've got here, um, your interface, your microphones that you'll use at home. You can list headphones, you can list anything you like really. I mean, I'm in a room here 
which is I've been relegated to during COVID to do this work. Um, and it's not my favourite room to record in. Um, I would much rather go somewhere else, but it's the room that where I do record at the moment. So you might want to comment on the room itself that you're in and what you think of the sound quality of the room and whether there's a better room that you prefer to use or whether there's different rooms in the house that you do use. You can list all of that in, well, maybe down here where it says studio requirements. So, because that we're, there we're talking about studios and live rooms and, you know, why you'll be using those spaces. So, again, this was written as a document to facilitate pre-production within the atrium studio. So you can still write in that if you, we were to get back into the uh, studios, which one you would use. So we can we can plan ahead just in case, uh, you know, we you do get that opportunity and you still want to take that opportunity. But like I said, you can also use that to discuss the spaces that you're in. Some of you might like to record outdoors, for example, which is quite interesting, especially with uh, what's been going on and the idea that outdoor recording could actually become more popular. So you might want to discuss that there. But please do list that there. And then, of course, any performance comments. So uh, if, you're, if, if you're the sort of person that likes something recorded to the grid, quantized spot on or if you're somebody who likes a, se a session to be more honest and maybe not so not so um, quantized a bit more natural or spontaneous and anything else that you think would really influence the production so you know when you listen to records sometimes you listen to records and you think well, that's you know really well produced there's a lot gone into that others you might think oh that sounds like a band in a room you know so please do put that in there and mixing notes, that's really just to give an indication of the mix styles. There'll be more on mixing uh, for the next assignment, but um, you can give some indication of, of what you would like it to sound like. If you've got a demo, only if you've got a demo, you can click this section here and you can upload a demo. Uh, you can upload it as um, you know, an MP3, it doesn't matter. Um, one file, no more than 10 gigs and an mp3 at this stage is fine and of course as always we would like to see your references so please do include any references in this section here you will notice that some of these sections have a little star by them like that which means that they you can't upload without filling in these sections so quite often what i do is rather than go straight to the google the uh, microsoft form I'll type it up in a Microsoft Word document or as a notepad or whatever, and then copy and paste the information in. So I think, I believe you can copy and paste information. You can leave the page. Let me just try that. So I'll just type that in there. Then I'll go on to um, another page. Oh, it didn't do it. Let me go, let me just do it here. Let's go back. Let's have a look, see if it saves. Yeah, it did. So it saves what I've done, what I've written, but it hasn't been submitted. So I don't see it. It hasn't been sent to me, me sending me a form. Um, but when I, as soon as I press submit, if I don't fill it out and I press submit, it'll say this is all required. So the demo is not required, for example. That should be required, but that's not required, just in case you haven't got a demo. But the rest are required, so you have to fill it out. And once you fill it out, then it's submitted and it comes to me. That is assignment one. Assignment two is your, or 2A should I say, is your um, mixing comments. So time, assignment 2A, final comments, mixing comments, So, which is the post-production stage. And what I want you to do is I want you to discuss how you achieved the, the mix uh, using the framework of Olsinski's six elements of a mix. So Olsinski's six elements of a mix are balance, frequency range, pan, dynamics, dimensions, and interest. And I'd like you to discuss how you think each of these were achieved. The beauty of that model is that it can be applied to any genre of music. And, um, and I don't know what you're going to be submitting, so you can apply it to any track, hip hop, rock, you know, whatever it is. And just to help you with that process, I've uploaded a copy, a 
copy of Olsinski's The Mixing Engineer's Handbook under the Learning Materials tab on Blackboard. So each of these again, on this Microsoft form, you've got balance, frequency range, pan, dynamics, dimension, interest, and last but by no means least, I would like you to give me an evaluation of your work, an oral evaluation, whether you think you achieved your goals and your aims and objectives or whether whether you you think that there's still some work to do and of course at that stage i like you to be honest because it'll help you then to progress with that song and that mix so that's assignment 2a that's a written um, piece on the mixing process word count uh, 2000 words each of these boxes take up to 4,000 uh, letters so you've got plenty of space and that's 2a and 2b oh and then next on another page no all oh, right okay hang on a minute I've made a mistake but I'm not going to stop this video because what should happen is let's go back sorry made a mistake Oh, there we are. So on this form, on this one form, you get assignment 2A and 2B. So there's the final mix comments. And at the very bottom, assignment 2B, track upload. Please upload your track as a stereo unmastered recording. You don't have to upload it as a logic project. And please upload though at full quality WAV or AIFF, no MP3s or other compressed formats. And when you do upload it, please include your name and student number in the title so I know who it belongs to. And once you've done that, then that gets sent to me directly as an email. So if there's, if you, it's upload speeds don't take long, but as soon as you upload, you should be able to um, press send. And after a while, it'll take a while, maybe a couple of minutes, but then it will send. And I'm pretty sure you'll get a message in your email say, as a receipt to say that you've sent it. If you've got any concerns, you can always email me. So that's it. Th those are the assignments. So it can be done at home. It can be done using any software you like. You don't have to use Logic. But of course, at the same time, you can use this as an opportunity to plan for any studio recording that you might do or might wish to do to embellish your productions. So for example, I'm working on a track at the moment here and it's all based around this drum loop. But I would like to hear what a live drummer would sound like playing that loop. So I'm thinking, you know, I, I might re-record that using a, you know, a live drummer or maybe sampling a drummer rather than the drummer playing the loop. Um, I would sample it and I would just sample replace this loop with other samples. Down here then I've got some Ebo going on and I was just wondering what that, there's the Ebo, I just wondered what this would sound like with strings. Admittedly I'd probably program the strings but um, I played the part with an Ebo just to get a feel for it. So maybe that's something that I would do in the studio if I could find string players to do it. I think that would sound really nice. Um, there's some other bits and bobs. I've got some a friend of mine who plays guitar who I would like to hear on this track, play on this track. I'd like him to you know, put a couple of ideas down. And, and so on. I've got some cellos going on down here. So if there's anything in your music that you think, oh, yeah, no, it'd be really good to re record that or re-record that in a studio, then, you know, it's a good opportunity for to use this assignment to plan and prepare for all that. So I think that's it. So good luck. Uh, if you can't meet the 4th of September uh, deadline, do let me know. But I really do encourage you to try and get the work completed and finished so that we can assess the situation from from there. All right. Thank you. Bye bye.